best thing you can do, if you committed a crime, in most scenarios. If you speak with me and confess, you're fucked. If you speak with me and lie, and I can prove it, you're fucked. If you say nothing at all, there's a chance I'm fucked. Always request a lawyer even if you haven't committed a crime because what you say can still be used against you. Having an attorney present during interrogation is an essential right. So much this. Do not talk to police, most of them are really stupid so this guy isn't a criminal mastermind but here goes. He wanted to rob a jeweler's on our city's main street. So he found out the flat beside the jeweler's was empty and he hid there. For two weeks he triggered the alarm on purpose several times a night, massive headache for the police and the business, we turned up to see nothing there, nothing on cameras, thought it was just a fluke so the jewelers turned off the alarm system and said they'd wait until the morning to get a new one installed or that one rewired because something wasn't right. As soon as he heard that and the police leaving he tore down the wall, had already been working on this apparently, and robbed the place taking his sweet time. Escaped without anyone noticing anything for hours, until the jewelers came back in the morning. Then he tried to resell something he stole which had a serial number on it and got caught. So not that smart after all. Good effort though. He did all the hard work pretty well. Guy I went to high school with kept selling this gold necklace under a fake ID to jewelry stores. When he had cash in his hand from the sale, he'd flash a real looking airsoft gun and demand the necklace back. Worked about twice until the third guy knew what the deal was if someone tried selling this one particular necklace. Shop owner went in the back to reference an appraisal book and just called the cops. Funny part was he got like a year for the robberies, but using the fake gun added 5 years to the sentence. Never rob a bank with a weapon. You'll be out in like a year or less if you get caught. Edit, tellers are trained to treat all robbers as though they are armed and to comply with their demands and get them out of the bank ASAP. Money is insured. Banks would rather lose a bunch of cash than deal with legal ramifications of an injured or killed employee. If you show up and tell the teller you're robbing them, they will probably give you the money quicker and more calmly than if you stuck a gun or knife in their face quicker. Premeditative daydreaming It's where you pace around for hours on end, fabricating a perfect or desired reality where things happen just the way you want them to. I've tried this to help me sleep at night but this just makes my mind think too much. Also I have a problem with this where I do this all the time and I can't stop. I don't have anxiety, but I do have a big problem with daydreaming for hours on end where it will affect my mood, facial expressions and lip movements. And I'll sometime have to stop what I'm doing to finish the daydream. Would you have any idea if there is a name for this problem? Maladaptive daydreaming. As weird as this sounds, whenever I am having an anxiety moment, I have chronic anxiety. I watch lo-fi hip-hop beats to relax slash study too. The music is soothing and there are often really nice people in the comments that can help me through it. What usually worked for me is the rule of fives. Anything that's getting me worried or worked up, ask myself, will this still be a problem in 5 minutes? 5 hours? 5 days? Etc. Things become a lot less scary when you realize they hardly ever make it past the first two questions. Honestly, Xanax is a literal lifesaver for me. Same. I'm only needed when a full panic attack happens which, fortunately, is only every few months. Prozac helps manage it daily. I have to find a doc who will write it for me though. So many people abuse it in my area it is hard to get docs to agree to prescribing. Same. My boyfriend and I both have anxiety and he gets a prescription of Xanax and my doctor won't give me one, probably because it's highly abused. I know it would help me but she still won't prescribe it. Maddening. I listen to music. I have 700 plus songs in my playlist, on a physical SD card. I have one for pretty much every occasion everything from a funeral to rough sex, all within certain bounds of my taste. Do you have one for crashing a funeral? What about crashing a funeral with rough sex? Depends if you make meatloaf. Musical note, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that, musical note. I have three approaches, physical, long term, and short term. Physical, avoid sugar and carbs. Get 8 to 9 hours of sleep every night, wake up at same time every morning, exercise every day. Long term, gradual controlled exposure to things that cause me anxiety. For example, if I'm afraid to talk to strangers, which I was, I start by going to a public place and keeping to myself. Next time I might make eye contact a few times, or maybe smile. Next time I'd ask someone for the time, or talk a little with a cashier. You get the point. Short term, I focus on my breathing. 
and remind myself of other situations where I was anxious, and it turned out okay. Instead of pushing the anxiety away, I accept it and pay close attention to how it feels the slightly sick feeling, the quick heartbeat, act. I just pay attention to the physical sensation and accept that it will be there while I do whatever it is that needs to be done. I have generalized anxiety disorder and major depressive disorder. Because of this I tend to constantly be thinking and overthinking things to the point of being anxious. I find that I cope the best when I look at situations from an outside perspective. So, rather than thinking how am I going to handle this I think how should they handle this. Disconnecting myself takes the pressure off. It can confuse people sometimes though because it gets to the point that I refer to myself as we despite considering myself to be one person with singular pronouns. I also bounce my leg a lot so there's that. I was diagnosed with both of those disorders in 2008 in my 30s. Went to the hospital a couple times, once in an ambulance, before I figured out what panic attacks were. I was on medication for a few years and went to therapy. You can get through it. I have been free and clear of it for many years now. While I still do feel anxiety creeping up on me occasionally, it hasn't affected my life, I have a family, stable job, group of friends, and travel a bit. PM me if you want more details about what I did. Mostly unhealthy methods. Working too much. Drinking too much. Constantly thinking about what is triggering the anxiety. A child therapist told my daughter that sometimes anxieties and fears are like a plant. You water it, talk to it, tend to it, it thrives. You neglect it, it withers. The strategy that worked for her is to set aside her fears, and have one, five minute period every evening before dinner where she talks to us about her fears and worries. Then, we leave the rest till the next day. Mind you, this is about getting a 7 year old to stop obsessing about bees in our yard, snakes at her school, cancer, whether her diet is healthy enough, dying in a shipwreck, we live in suburban Atlanta and she's never been on a boat of any kind, etc. This worked wonders for her. It's not really suppressing, it's using mindfulness to realize that there is no danger right this moment, and to postpone talking about the spiraling thoughts until the evening vent period. You're a good parent. Your daughter is immensely lucky to have you. Sounds like great parenting on dealing with cancer and shipwreck fears. Um, why are there so many bees in your yard and snakes at her school? There aren't. She got stung by a bee last year, and thinks she saw a snake in the woods at her school, it's a nature school, so they're always outside, in the woods, gardening, tending horses, etc. It's not like a snake slithered into a cafeteria or something. Hmm. A nature school reminds of a certain school in the northern suburbs of Atlanta. Smile. Breathing in my nose and out of my nose. When we start breathing through our mouths and panting it signals our body we are in trouble. If you stay through your nose it helps you remain incredibly calm. I just used this technique recently and it changed my life. Highly suggest, heart. I was told by a counselor recently that people who have anxiety tend to take very shallow breaths. Since he said that. I've paid more attention to my breathing and it makes such a difference. I feel more alert, less worried about random things, and don't yawn nearly as much as I used to. Couldn't agree more. Certainly nor doing something to change your appearance. Nothing says I'm trying to cover up a mental breakdown quite like doing something drastic to your hair. Many pixie cuts later I finally decided I should stop chipping all my hair off when I get stressed lol. Geez. If that works for you then cool beans but I can't even imagine how anxious I'd be if I changed something and people called me out on it or didn't like it. I don't know if this is the healthiest, but I have no worry times these are just 2 hours of my day I put away where I don't worry about anything, and then I'll do the worrying later. It took me a while to get used to, but it helps. Also taking shower helps for me, but I don't know if that's just me. I wish showering would help my anxiety. Showering is really difficult for me. I normally need some kind of stimulation to keep my mind busy. Whether it's music or looking out a window etc but in the shower my anxiety takes over because there's nothing else to look at or listen to. I've been playing music in the bathroom lately, which sometimes helps, but it's still hard to not lose it on a bad day. Podcasts or audiobooks fix this for me x. It's so crazy you mention this, because I find that if I'm having an anxious day, a shower doesn't help calm me down it makes the anxiety so much worse. It's a claustrophobic feeling I guess. I'm going to try the music, thank you for sharing. I love this. That's a great idea. The shower thing for me too. I'm pregnant currently, and I found out that I am one of the lucky ones who gets postpartum depression symptoms during pregnancy. I figured this out when I went to take a shower and it didn't help, and I was actually screaming in pain by the time I got out of it. I was able to get help and a few weeks later, we're doing much better. I feel normal again. Used to get major panic attacks and anxiety, 
distractions helped me. Sometimes heading outside with some music and headphones while going for a walk to get some fresh air helps. Massages help. It sounds weird, but I've had friends that have given me neck rubs or massaged my scalp while I was freaking out thinking I was dying. For some reason it has helped during major panic attacks. It also helps when you have friends that experience the same thing. Showers tend to be good for me. Something about the water whether it's hot or cold kind of pulls me out of the anxiety or panic attacks I'm in. These things helped me most when I've had panic attacks or anxiety. It took years to conquer and I still get mild anxiety, but the most important thing that helped me, was this. I've had panic attacks and anxiety episodes so bad I've called the ambulance or gone to the hospital. During those episodes, I 100% thought I was gonna die. Yet, here I am 5 6 years later writing this out to you all. I survived each episode and I will survive the future ones. If I can, so can you. Don't give up friends. Valium and Don't Laugh, Adult Horror Themed Coloring Books. If this helps, I'm a software developer and at one of my jobs, they passed out coloring books after some stressful times. There was a bunch of grown men at work all sitting around a table having fun filling out coloring books. We had meetings that were just large blocks of time for nothing but coloring. And you know what? It worked. Got everyone to focus on something else and do a task that didn't really matter. Really refreshed people and helped us come up with some good solutions. Coloring books are a damn effective stress reliever. Sounds fun. Remember that anxiety will likely always be with you, but know that you are driving the car. When anxiety tries to drive, say no, I am driving, you go back to your seat. Personifying my anxiety helped a lot. I can now easily identify when I am talking and when my anxiety is talking. Clean my room till you are bored. Sounds dumb but if you put a bit of music on, it distracts you and gets something productive done too. If this is you looking for advice, best of luck with your anxiety man. Okay, but this is the last time I'm cleaning your room. I realized this shortly after but it was too funny to edit. But Jordan Peterson would be proud. Just be sure to denounce postmodernism before and after using your vacuum. One technique that I was taught, which I actually find to be quite good, is to ground yourself. Pick five things you can see, five things you can hear, five things you can touch, etc. The five can be any number, and is probably better a bit lower, because of lack of answers, but the concept is still the same. It's supposed to get your mind working in the right way when it's being flooded in the wrong way, and basically help you control the thought process. It's connected to CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. How you think affects how you feel and how you behave and vice versa. If you are in an anxiety spiral, it's easier to think even more bad thoughts. Mindfulness is a method to jumpstart your way out of that type of spiral and instead focus on what is immediately in front of you. CBT is an absolute lifesaver for me. It was like putting on glasses for the mind, it corrected my vision of the world. I mean, there are limits and it is primarily symptomatic treatment, but after I went through with it, it became so much easier to work on my regular shit after that. Yeah man nothing gets you out of a rut quite like cock and ball torture. Exercise. Can't stress enough how much that helps me with a lot of things. Everyone thinks I love going to the gym, but actually I hate it. I just need to go. Keeps me sane and fit. Exercise keeps the internal chatter to a minimum. It's almost like the voices get tired too. Too fucking true. I remember when I started going to the gym I was like, well I have this problem that I'm being anxious with, I'll think about it in the gym. Nope, it just went away for the time I was there, it's like a mute button to your thoughts most of the time. Self-awareness. When I realize my anxiety is bad, acknowledge it and come to terms with. If possible think of why it's bad and realize it's temporary or just not worth getting anxious about. A step beyond this, for me, is to write out every anxious thought floating around. Typically, being anxious makes me snowball by thinking of all the things that make me anxious, when you take all these issues at once and try to juggle them in your head, it's easily overwhelming. So I make the time to write them all out, then I go back and respond to each one. Writing them out forces me to focus on each issue individually, understand what the source of my anxiety is for that issue, and consider how it might be rectified. By the end, I'm usually much less anxious because I've gotten everything out onto paper and considered it all individually rather than cumulatively. X, I am anxious because my paper isn't done yet and it's due in two days. If I don't get this paper done I'll probably fail and may not get my degree. Response, over the next two days there are at least six hours available to work on this paper. There are at least 8 to 10 hours if I reduce my sleep by a little. I know I can write a paper in less than 10 hours, so I know I'll have time. 
Tomorrow I'll do X for at least 3 hours, and the next day I'll finish with Y even if this paper isn't my absolute best work, it will still be a passing grade if I spend enough time on it, by passing, my overall grade is guaranteed to be good enough that I won't be kicked out. I'm anxious about my friend being mad at me, because I know I said something rude and hurt them. I don't want them to hate me or stop being my friend. Response, friends fight and people make mistakes. We've been friends long enough that they will likely forgive me. I should come up with a genuine apology and tell them how much I valued them. I'll see them at an event Friday, so I want to send them this message by Thursday afternoon. Etc. Message, deep calm breathes. Funny enough, taking deep calm breathes actually makes me more anxious lol. It's almost like my brain knows I only do this when I start panicking so I panic even more. Great strategy though as I know it works for a lot of people. Same. 478 breathing was the exception, you might find it same for you. Otherwise, I recommend mindfulness. Super helpful, it's the meditation slash soothing without the focus on breathing or the exact same rituals every time, that your brain learns and associates with anxiety the more you repeat. Or, you do what is recommended and do the calm breathing slash rituals when calm often and consistently so you train yourself to be calm when doing those things but I don't know about you, I'm not that put together, my anxiety has hit an all time high and it's comforting to me to see that I'm not alone. Thanks everyone for sharing. With as many people as there are in the world, there's always someone who can relate. Hope you start doing better. Oil field. Oil field implies upstream, drilling slash fracking, offshore rigs, etc., but the same can be said for downstream, refineries, chemical plants, etc. For folks like operators, welders, and inspectors, there's hardly any educational requirement, and the biggest requirements are showing up on time, passing drug tests, and learning the procedures that others teach you. It's pretty easy to make six figures in those roles too. You'd be surprised with how hard it is to find people that show up on time and pass the drug test. Source, work in the oil industry. Took my comment. My company has a backlog of people they would like to fire for good reasons, but every new person we get proves unreliable and dishonest. Source, Energy and Data Center Industries Garbage Disposal Service. Yep. I work as a sorter at a construction slash demolition yard and am currently making $30 an hour as a 21 year old. Plus if you're lucky, your bosses might put you on extra training that qualifies you for even more work in and out of the industry. Only real big issue is how dirty I get. Still, $30 an hour. Hey that's my job too. There's good money in it and you learn a truckload of skills along the way just working alongside so many different types of tradesmen. Yeah man, it's underrated cause how dirty you get but so far I've gotten a free WHS cert, excavator ticket and general knowledge that I didn't have before. WHS cert? Yep. WHS cert may not be the best thing to call it but it is the health and safety representative course. The HSR role is a voted position by the elected workers teammate. The role of the HSR is to represent the workers on safety issues when in that particular work group, I manage the yard, my coworker manages the truck drivers. It's a $700 course that I got for free that is recognized in most states in Australia. I use the legislation slash cops etc to make sure my bosses stay compliant slash the workers feel safe. Traffic control. I paid $400 to join the laborers union and started making $31, hour the next day, no experience. Absolutely the most boring job ever, but we traveled a lot and saved dollar. What part did the laborers union play? Because I just googled it and see a posting for the job in my city for $15 per hour but I'm more interested in this $31 per hour. The union provided insurance, retirement benefits and other things if you stayed for more than 10 years. The dues were about $45 a month. Train driver slash conductor slash engineer slash whatever they are called in your country. That's actually something I might want to get into later. I'm currently getting an English degree at uni. Although there are quite some jobs in that field in the Netherlands, I might just reschool myself as a train driver a few years down the line. Only takes two years, the pay starts average and gets really good a few years in. I love traveling by train, and I feel like I would love the freedom feel of driving the train itself. Only downside to this job is the many suicides by train. Around 200 people every year. Yup, that downside caused our neighbor to stop with her job. Even therapy didn't help anymore with all the nightmares and anxiety she had. I mean, it's hard to see somebody jump in front of your train, and not being able to do anything to avoid it. Seeing what it did with her. I'm not so keen to try it. 
but if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't mind becoming a train driver as well. Also in the Netherlands BTW. I lost my brother five and a half years ago when he committed suicide by jumping in front of a train. I hadn't talked to him in six years and hadn't seen him for 12 years all because of a stupid argument and holding a grudge. He left everyone a note except me. Not even one word yet wrote others full page letters. He was my only family member I had left. Lost my mom to suicide at age 5 and my father had a massive heart attack in front of me at age 15. To anyone holding a grudge and not speaking to someone just please pick up the phone and call them. I should have called him, I could have called him. Hardest lesson I've ever learned. Please don't be like I was. Make the call while you still can. I was on an Amtrak train a few weeks back, if you live in the United States. Conductor told me that a quarter of their workers are retiring within the next decade and they need new people. He said you can start out at $70,000 a year with benefits and within 3 to 5 years could be making $100,000. No experience needed. That blew me away, I'd check it out if I were you. Edit, I don't work for Amtrak. I just heard this in passing from a conductor on a train in the Northeast Corridor. Take this post with a grain of salt and do your research. To be fair a quarter of their workers retiring within the next decade doesn't sound like a high number. If they repeat that stat every decade their average employee will have a 35-year career, which seems pretty reasonable. Edit, I made an unfair assumption in my initial mental math. I believe the average career would be closer to 40 years, not 35, given only the information we have. And baby boomers are a larger than average generation, so as they retire, I assume many industries will be losing a quarter of their employees in the next decade. That's assuming they can retire. If I'm not mistaken, as a whole, boomers are not saving nearly enough for retirement. And many of them just won't be able to. As a millennial, man, I just cannot wait until the boomers have one more reason to hate me. In before the millennials.